morning, church family. Good morning. The sun is finally out, at least for a little bit, after some nice rain that we had to nourish the flowers. And as we get started, I think I have just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first, another reminder about our Iron Pig sign-up sheet. You have just to the end of this month, now we're in May, so you have till the end of this month to sign up for our Iron Pigs uh, Church Baseball Night, which will be on Saturday, July 1st. So if you uh, take a look at the board and you have any questions about those sign up sheets, you can feel free to ask either myself or Dave Crow. We, there you go, that's who you ask with any questions. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a, a good group of us. I've seen a good number of sign ups already, so I'm looking forward to it especially if the Iron Pigs do better than the Red Sox have been doing recently. Ah. And uh, one other announcement, just uh, if you wanted a paper copy of our newsletter, but you didn't get one last week because I failed to print enough copies, I have printed more copies. So there are now more paper copies of the newsletter on the counter in the narthex. So feel free to pick one up if you would like one. Those were the only two announcements I had this morning. So are there any other news or announcements from the community? Anything that I missed? All right. Then we will uh, let the chimes bring us into worship. God welcomes everyone. And so I invite everyone to rise as your equal in body or spirit, and we will join together in this morning's call to worship. Resonating with the truth of the good news. Responding to the nudge that prods us along our winding ways. Reverent at the glorious wonders of creation's wide ranging species and spaces. God's gathered people shout your praise. Sing the first two verses of our opening hymn, number 207.
interactions between people who are fed by his words and led by his example. But for every time we succeed in those endeavors, there is one where we uh, fall short in our attempts at them, often unintentionally, but occasionally on purpose. The times when we have failed to show others the love God has shown us, we confess. Merciful God, we have not always echoed your endless mercy. We have not always echoed your expansive table. We have not always echoed your courageous deeds. Forgive us for all the ways we have not echoed your love. As we have confessed out loud together, so we also take a moment to confess within our own hearts in the silence. God has mercy on all our shortcomings. Christ came to show us that mercy for every moment of his earthly mission, and especially through its ultimate moment on the cross. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that mercy is always surrounding us. And so we proclaim. We'll have our anthem a little bit later during communion this morning, but for now, friends, let's pray as we prepare to read our scriptures. Holy One, even as we will soon be fed at your communion table, we long to be fed by these sacred words, to be infused with life by them just like infants who are nourished by their mother's milk. Feed us through your spirit this morning. The people say, Amen. Our reading from the letter of First Peter actually comes just before last week's reading about Jesus as the suffering servant and the guarding shepherd. In this passage, the primary metaphor is about stones, both the kind of stones the people should be and the kind of stone Jesus is, depending on whether or not one believes in him. We read from chapter 2, beginning at the second verse. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight,
light. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see I have been laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. This honor then is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ends the first reading. In our Gospel reading from John, we are at the beginning of the long speech Jesus gives to his disciples during John's version of the Last Supper, which is the only Gospel to record it. Jesus begins this speech with words of comfort, but moves quickly into words of challenge about the disciples' belief. We read from chapter 14, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. Here ends the readings for today. May they be a lamp for our feet. <coughs> so who picked up their stone on the way in? If most of us, if not, don't worry, you can get them all the way out, they're out uh, where the bulletins are. Contrary to uh, some chatter I've heard, they are not for stoning the pastor. <laughs> but here is what I do want you to do with them right now. 
take a look at your stone and then turn to the front page of your bulletins and take a look at the picture on the front. They're both stones. We got stones on the front of the bulletin and you got stones as well. So here's a question for you, and this can be shouted out. We don't need to raise hands. What's the difference between your stones and the stones on the front of the bulletin? They have words on them. Yes, exactly. Very good. The stones on the front of the bulletin have words on them. Your stones are blank. Why do you think your stones are blank? Yeah, that's a harder question, right? So I could have given you stones like the ones on the front of the bulletin. Sometimes they're called worry stones or inspiration stones, even prayer stones. I could have found stones with faith words or pictures of crosses. The truth is, we don't all need the same word on our stones, do we? These stones are a symbol, like in our first reading this morning, a symbol of how we make ourselves alive for Christ. Just think about that. If you had to write your word on your stone, what would you write? What would encourage you to live for Christ, to make yourself a living stone? Now this comes in two parts this morning, because guess what? After worship, if you would like, this part is optional, you'll have a chance to write on your stone on your way up through the parlor, uh, in front of the window, there'll be a stone writing station set up with some markers. So if you think of that word that brings your spiritual self to life, that encourages you to be a living stone for Jesus, and you want to write that as a reminder, you'll be able to do that after worship. So in the meantime, as we prepare to go into our sermon, think about what that word is for you. What word would you put on your stone? What word brings you to life for Christ? Think about that as we sing the first two verses of our sermon hymn number 84. Thank you.
appropriate that our readings for this fifth week in the Easter season happen to fall on what is, for us, our first communion Sunday since Easter morning, because it's also the first time since then that the Gospel text itself has returned to the Last Supper. We opened our Easter season with readings from after Jesus' resurrection, with post-tomb appearances like the one that answers the doubts of Thomas, and the one that sets fire to the hearts of the Emmaus-bound disciples. Now, as we draw closer to the season's end, when we celebrate Jesus' ascension and then the appearance of the Holy Spirit, we've circled back to those moments approaching the crucifixion. Because they are the moments during which Jesus is preparing his disciples for their lives without his physical presence. And the Gospel of John has by far the most space devoted to those moments. Where the other Gospels wrap up the Last Supper setting and have the group on its way to Gethsemane in less than a chapter each, John spends five chapters at the supper. John's version begins in chapter 13, one before our reading, not with the words of institution, which we'll speak shortly, which are completely absent in John, but with Jesus washing the disciples' feet as an example of what they should do for each other and for all others. Then we get today's passage which is the beginning of what is often referred to as the farewell discourse. Now, that's scholar talk for something written as if it were a goodbye speech by a famous person. It's a specific type of writing that would have been known to the Jewish literary culture of Jesus' time, just like a murder mystery or a comic book are both types of writing that are known to our modern literary culture. One of the most famous examples of a farewell discourse before the one in John is the entirety of the book of Deuteronomy, which, despite being recorded centuries after his death, is written entirely as if it were a speech Moses is giving to the Israelites just before his death. The same thing is happening here. The Gospel of John was written decades after Jesus' death for people already living in a world without his physical presence. But this part is written as a speech Jesus is giving right before his death to people who have not yet experienced that world. By writing it this way, as a farewell speech, John is giving authoritative weight to this section, 
making it clear that these words in particular are really, really important. And all of that importance centers on this passage's I am statement, which Jesus makes in verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The first five verses are a lead up to this proclamation. Jesus is able to prepare a place for the disciples in the Father's presence because Jesus is the Father. Because Jesus provides access to God, the Father, Creator, in a manner that has never been known before. For the disciples at the Last Supper, Jesus is telling them not to be troubled because he's in the process of preparing them a brand new kind of dwelling with God. That's what's happening through the events of Holy Week. And for the readers of John's Gospel, it's already happened. They already have their dwelling places in the Father's house. These verses aren't only about the end of the journey, though so that's in there too. They are about the journey itself. Not only about where we will be one day, but also about where we already are because of what Jesus has done. brings us back to that I am statement. When Thomas is confused and asks about a literal place Jesus might be going, Jesus makes it clear that he's not talking about a place at the end of a journey, but about a living journey of which the destination is but one piece. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the dwelling place. I am the word made flesh. I am the resurrection everlasting. If there's ever a place in John where the Gospel's entire message could be pulled into a tiny nutshell, it's here. For the community of believers, for the first Gospel readers, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is what sets them apart from every other kind of belief out there. It's not a statement against other faith communities, despite having been used that way sometimes, but a statement for the Christian community. This is who we are. We are the people for whom Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We are the people whose access to God comes through who Jesus is and what he has done. That same pronouncement given to the disciples as an exhortation not to be troubled in the face of trouble has now become for us a rallying cry 
to remember what Jesus gave and continues to give us a dwelling place in God's presence now and forever. Forever and now. I haven't talked much yet about 1 Peter and its image of living stones, despite naming this sermon after it, and despite having given you your own stones to bring to life. And that's because I think that what the author of 1 Peter writes works best as a response to that central gospel proclamation of Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. The gospel declares what Jesus is for us, the believers. What first Peter declares is what we, the believers, are supposed to be because of it. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. And a few verses further down, continuing, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for you, you are living stones, a holy and royal priesthood, God's own people for Jesus. We might admire the neatness of the gospel nutshell and proclamation like Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We certainly should rejoice that it means a new way of dwelling in God's presence in the Father's house for us, both now and forever. But when it comes down to it, what the most, what is most important is what we do with that good news. What is most important is what we do with our belief about who Jesus is. What is most important about Jesus being our way, our truth, and our life is how it makes us into living stones, into God's own people today, right now. In the midst of uh, the journey that is being in God's presence through Jesus. Think back to uh, your blank stone. You might have decided by now what you want to write on it. You might still be thinking about it. You might want to leave it empty so that it can be the reminder you need down the road. Whatever you choose to do with your blank stone, go out from here thinking about how you will make yourself a living stone. How you will respond to the good news that Jesus is your way, your truth, your life. 
how you continue your journey as one of God's own people, chosen and precious, today, tomorrow, forever. Amen. Friends, as we uh, prepare to uh, pray together, a few uh, updates that I've been authorized to share about some folks we've been praying for. Both Tony Saylor and Pam Williams have both gone home. Pam was in the, was in rehab for a while, but she's gone home to continue her rehab for outpatient. And Tony Saylor has also been released and is at home. Uh, last week we were praying for Bob, for Bob Pritchett as he went into surgery on Monday. Uh, on Tuesday, his wife Mary let me know that he came through the surgery with flying colors. It went as well as his surgeons wanted it to go. And when I spoke with him on Thursday, he was very eager already to be going home. So. He is still in the process of recovery, but very much set on that happening as quick as possible so he can be back home with Mary. So we rejoice that we have all good news this week so far, and we continue to pray for these folks we love in their recoveries. And are there any other joys, concerns, prayer requests to share with the community this morning? And let's pray, church family. Christ our way, our truth, our life. We who once were lifeless clay are living stones in you. We who once walked in darkness have been called into the light by you. We who once made ourselves distant from your presence have been made at home in it through you. We could carve a thousand words of thanks into our spiritual houses and none of them would be enough. So instead, we give you our words of petition, our words that show we know that we are in you, and you in us, and all of us in God, who hears us when we ask for healing light to surround all those who need it those whose names we have spoken, and those whose names remain inside our hearts. For whispers of worthiness to surround all those who feel forgotten, those whose families make them feel invisible, and whose friends let them fade into wallflowers. For comforting calm to surround all those who are overwhelmed by chaos, those who are thrashing in the riptide of their emotions, and those who are buried by their piling responsibilities, for guiding wisdom to surround all those who make decisions for others, those who are in power over nations, and those who are in power over workers. And finally, oh God, 
for courageous commitment to surround those who believe in your church, those who strive to be living stones and chosen precious priesthoods for Jesus, who once taught his people to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, on our table by reflecting on that presence 
as you listen to this music. trio performance. Friends, let's pray. God is with us. Yeah. Christ is present here. Spirit Let us give thanks to God. Yeah. We give thanks to you, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and bounty of the earth, and for giving us the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that to still call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come in celebration of Jesus, who is our way, our truth, and our life. And so with all the faithful everywhere, we sing together.
and desertion. Jesus gathered the disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so uh, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection, we declare. Christ's coming, we await. Glory be to you, O God. It's time. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit through this meal. Strengthen us as the body of Christ, we who are your living stones. Restore the earth with your grace that alone is able to make all things new. And the people say,
forgiveness of all, taking drinks for Christ's blood was shed for you. Friends, as we have been united and sustained as members of Christ's body in our holy meal, let us rise as we are able and we will join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. We'll remain standing for the closing hymn. Pray with me, church family. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed this day by Christ's body and blood. Make your universal church a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. We'll sing all three verses of our closing hymn. It is number 434. Your bulletin is incorrect. Pay attention, listen to the sides. It's 434. That is the familiar tune to What a Friend We Have in Jesus That You Know. And this, friends, is why I am not our music director. 434. <laughs> Redeemer. 